Welcome to this episode of Disrepair. Yeah. Today, we're going to do a couple things. Number one is we've got a lot of cool projects in the shop, and we just want to catch you guys up on what we're working on. The other thing is, from time to time, vendors send us some products to test out, and we've got a couple of these here, and we just want to show you and demonstrate whether they're worth buying or not. The first thing we have here is a home charging station from uh, from a company that sent us this, kind of like a do-it-yourself kit. Uh, James, who sent us this, and what it, what do we have here? Um, yeah, this was sent to us by OpenVolt, and they're, uh, yeah, they produce these, they make them pre-assembled, or they can send them to you, and you can assemble them yourselves. Since they are an assemble it yourself, it means you have the freedom to assemble it in different configurations. You can, you can kind of split it up, you can embed it in other things. Like, have you ever seen those cool gas pumps people charge with? Oh, yeah, okay. Stuff like that. So you can make that kind of thing out of this and have your own, your own branded charger with this. Um, we're going to take it out of the box. We have never put one of these together, so we're going to see how hard it is for you guys and uh, kind of do a little review on it. Yeah, you can watch us struggle. This is the exciting, so I can like Christmas. This, so this is part of the unit right here. Yeah, I can hear stuff jingling around in it. because this is, we. So we opted for, he said there's a fully assembled or there's a assemble it yourself. So I opted for the assemble it yourself. So I mean, this is quality right here. I'm so sure. it doesn't look that You're labeled too, like yeah, this uh, L1, yeah, P-E-N. Standard labels. Oh, same plug we use. This is the NEMA 650 plug, like a standard welding plug. All so right. Do you want to uh, see if, since there were no written instructions in the Maybe case, we should find them? Yeah, so we might have to go out to the internet. So, with this charger here, we finally found the, um, the, the instructions to be able to put it together. Uh, on the OpenVolt website, they do have a blog tab there, and one of the first things that comes up is the how to build an OpenVolt 1. Uh, on this instruction list, though, it does um, give you all the port parts listed, but we are going to skip a couple steps technically because they've already mounted some of the components inside the box, as we see over here. As Dan is very beautifully showing us. So, yes. So I got to the the white one's going to go right on that terminal right there. Okay. Just making sure. Okay, so that is hooked up. Okay, so we got the AC plug is hooked up. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, got the PC. neutral. Yeah, you got the well, basically the two, the two power lines, and then the ground line is all hooked up to two twenty. Okay. The next step we have though that we are going to be doing is connecting the output cable, and here you can kind of see on the schematic that we are going to be using those um, current sensors that were just pointed up. Uh, a couple things here. So the instructions are pretty clear on how it's supposed to be wired but the colors do not match the instructions so just be aware of that the other thing is you got to crimp some wires here so uh, the lengths are obviously wrong so don't go chopping these off until you lay them in the in the box so Jason point okay I'm gonna slide these through and then we're gonna make them go through the proper current sensor, so line and neutral. both of them go through the one, and okay. only one of them goes through the other. Okay, so these two, yeah, those two line go through. and neutral go through yeah. there. And then where do these two go? So the so green this is one ground. is ground. Okay, so I'll pull that one away. The orange one's gonna go all the way up to this little block up here. Okay, so it's got to make that whole thing. Your uh, wiring is only as good as your crimp, so. Very important to get these good. You gotta keep your crimp hands strong. Keep your crimp hands strong. Mm -hmm. James, are you gonna do this live? We're doing this do live. It live. We're doing it live. Ready? Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Oh. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> it's like this thing is funny. Like it goes and. I don't use this crimper much. This is kind of like, mm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh man, that's beautiful. Should be a good crimp, right? Yeah. Got the screw. You recording this? Yep. This is the money shot here. Ah. Oh. Let's just throw this away. I just my fingers are gonna be in the way. Yeah. There you go. The father son project, except for both brothers, it makes no sense. Okay, install lid, power up, and charge. I mean, this seems like we did it right. 
There's a lid. You probably want this on there since it's got turned on. And that's good, right? Power on, self test. So, yeah, everything came on. That's good. And it has kilowatt hour. It has all, the, it does have like ready. It has the kilowatt hour. So, like that. So, we should be able to plug it in, get all the way in, you know? There. I heard something. Oh, possibly. Oh, there it goes. Hey, that's probably better. Try right? it. Says, yeah, here it goes. It says charging. Charger kicked on. One kilowatt. Yeah. This is 14.5 amps. Um, I do like it. It's simple. Very easy to use. You plug it in, just get it clicks on, and just starts working. So you know, if you're if you want something a little less conventional than just something plug it in in your garage, I think this product would be good uh, cost wise. How much does it run? I think they run around five hundred. Five hundred. Yeah, That's which good. is about the going rate for a charger. Um, the the yeah, like I said the benefits are obviously it'd be hard to embed most of the off the shelf ones into something. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be able to split them up. Um, the assembly is fairly easy, actually. Once we, they have um, now they include a QR code, which didn't capture in the video, but now there's a QR code right in there that you can scan. It'll take you right to the instructions for assembly. Behind me, uh, we've got one of our favorite projects. This is uh, Run DMC, our uh, DeLorean EV swap. So James, tell us, we've made some real progress on this one recently. Oh man, yeah, this thing, we're finally getting moving on it. Um, it has a mod. We put a Model Three uh, Tesla motor in it, and uh, sixty-six kilowatt hours of prismatic battery cells in this. And so batteries are installed. The motor's in it. Wiring is getting done. We'll cut some videos out later to show you guys some progress on this thing when it actually runs. We're just lacking what one part. We're lacking one part. Literally one part comes in. Hopefully it comes in next week. This thing will. This thing will be running. It'll be going to be awesome. Not your typical EV conversion. We're calling this one, well, actually, we don't have a name for it. So you guys uh, out there on the interwebs, uh, you know, type in something. We we thought Mellow Yellow would be cool. What was some of the other ones? you? Oh, some of the, what do we had? We had EV Heavy Lemon Chevy. <laughs> we had something to do, something around uh, yellow, yellow Submarine. Yellow Submarine. And I, then, uh, yeah, what year's uh, Yellow Kitty. That one's oh, pretty funny. Yellow <laughs> Kitty. Yeah, instead of Hello. Anyway, um, this car's pretty cool. It was a 350 Chevy equipped street rotted pickup and the guy was tired of messing with the engine so now we're putting in dual hyper nines uh t5 behind it this thing should be a really fun oh it'll ride. really be fast yeah it's i mean rip. yeah it will really rip that's the only thing about mellow yellow is it's not really going to be very mellow at all that's right maybe it's ironically <laughs> mellow that's so, right. yeah very cool truck like i said we don't have a name for it all right over here you can see in the background we've got another model a coming in now this model a is already restored very nice one again and same as the last model a we did the model e we're going to convert this to a, a bolt-in ev conversion and try to give it that vintage look again so this still runs and drives barely i think we can get it started we drove it we got it started and drove it in but uh driving a model a you know you try to drive one to work for a week it's quite a bit to get it up and running and and stay running smooth yeah so there's a so anybody out there that needs a running Model A engine, we're probably gonna have one for sale real shortly. Yeah. <laughs> the other product we received is a uh, DepsTech uh, endoscope. Now this thing, um, you know, this can come in handy in your shop. Obviously there are some times when you have things you just can't see with your eyes. You gotta have something to reach around corners and stuff. This thing, we used it, a little demo video on it. We'll cut to that right now. So what we got here is the DS620, said something about it earlier. We didn't end up having to use it on the MG because we actually fixed the problem without it. But we've got another problem that Jimmy created. He dropped a washer possibly down the engine on this car. So this is a perfect application for this. This is a professional industrial endoscope. Yeah. And if y'all are like middle-aged, you probably know what an endoscope is for. <laughs> Maybe we'll use that for yeah. this. But anyway, let's unbox this thing. So packaging is nice, right? Yeah, it comes looks to, nice. Like nothing's gonna happen. Ooh, look at that. Comes with a bag, you can store it in afterwards. Let's see how much lead we got here. Yeah, you hold that in. Kind of excited about this thing. You can see around corners. Oh, color display, very nice. Okay, let's go English. 
beginner's guide. That is nice because I have not opened the book yet. It is nice. It is prompting me for some instructions here. Okay. Single press. Take a photo. Video. Hold the button to start recording so you can record. Okay. Look at the lead on this thing, Brent. Wow, that is very long. What do you think? That's like a... It looks like 20 foot. 20 feet at least. Wow. If you were having to trace a wire down like a oh, that's like perfect. A old chassis or something, this would be handy. Yeah, I, look, I like this. you got a reset button down here. It looks like you've got a place to charge it and a place to put a, a USB or a, a, a SIM card somewhere. Um, charging. It's got a USB-C plug-in, so that's good. Can you record with this? You can record with it, yep. That'll be nice. Okay. Well, let's do some uh, real-life application and see how this works. We pulled the 350 out of the corner. The, what had potentially happened here is we took the carburetor off this, and there was a washer missing. So if you've ever had one of these fall down your intake, this can be a lifesaver, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to pull the tape off this, and we're going to look down in. And just make sure there was nothing dropped in this engine because it could potentially ruin an engine. This is cheap insurance. So we just reach down in here. So Brent, tell me which way to go. Okay, so. So I'm seeing it in the take. Is, nice. Can it it's, zoom it's in and out? Oh wow, yeah, you can, it's, it's got very, a nice light. So oh yeah, you can see it real good. Okay, we're going back. It's kind of tough because. We did not move it around that much. So I don't, you know what, I think it's supposed to be like this, isn't it? That's one thing about these, you have to make sure you're oriented right. So I don't see it down that. Go the other way. That light on the end makes it really nice. Look at that, that's great. Very clear. So what am I seeing there? See that? What is that? Oh, that's just the... I don't see anything in there, man. No, me either. Okay. I think, I think we would have seen it by now. Look at that. That's a great picture. Jeez. That's just the casting on the inside, so we're good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we've we've determined that there is no washer down this, so crisis averted. If there was, we could have just fished it out with the magnet, but uh, that's a good check. Now, here's another thing. That's happened to me before. I've gone and bought in a, one of those Craigslist rebuild motors. It's got a nice paint job. And you're like, okay, the outside looks good and it looks rebuilt. But taking one of these along, you just pull a couple spark plugs out and take a look down those cylinders. Because this one time, the guy said it was fresh rebuild. I had a camera like this. I looked down the cylinders, it was full of rust. I didn't have to buy that engine, so it saved me a bunch of money. So anyway, let's... I pulled, we took the liberty to pull a little plug out of this one. This can also help you sell an engine too. If a guy comes and says, I want to look inside that, make sure it's good. You can just stick a bore scope camera in there, right down the cylinder. And look at that. You can nice. still see the, I mean, you can show him, look, this thing has very little scoring on it. You can even read the tops of the pistons. Look at this. You can check the seats and you can see if a valve's burned. I mean, like you can really get in the heart of this engine and actually see, you know, you can rotate it over and see if everything's moving and save yourself a lot of headache. Then you can just put this thing in your car without having to worry about it. I mean, me personally, I'd go down every cylinder, check it out. I think it's a good product. I think they'll do well with yeah. this. Very, very Definitely, good uh, resolution. Good resolution, yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, I would compare this to the, like the Harbor Freight ones I bought in the past. They're kind of cloudy, it's hard to see. This yeah. one has a lot better resolution yeah, than that. Really good sure. resolution, so. right. Yeah, definitely uh, happy with it. Be good to have a shot. This is comparable in price to one you can buy at Harbor Freight, and it's got a lot better image quality. You can tell you we bought several of those other styles. So Yeah, it also to... feels higher quality. Like it feels like you're not gonna break it. The other thing it had capability is you can slide in a, like a memory stick and, and record video. So yeah, it's got some good good features and a pretty good product. So yeah, we've been using it in the shop. Recently. Yeah, it's been awesome. All right, so those are some of our new products. Uh, let's go around the shop and talk about some of our are interesting projects that are going on. So some of them you may know, and some of them are kind of old favorites, but uh, we've got some new ones in here that we haven't even talked about that you guys haven't even seen. You probably go, is that that orange BMW we just finished, Agent Orange? No, this is another orange BMW 2002. 
But the only difference between this one and the last one is we are putting the manual transmission behind the dual hyper nines. So the last one was already pretty darn quick. I'm just thinking how much fun is it going to be to have a manual in a little car like this with dual hyper nines. Yeah, I can't wait to see this thing. This is going to be awesome. Manual transmission, dual hyper nines. And we've also configured a new setup for the dual hyper nines. You know, they don't make the dual shafts anymore. Uh, we've just kind of put together our own kit on those. So if you guys are interested in dual motors, hyper nines, they still, we can do it. Yep. Here's another one of the projects you guys probably haven't seen yet. It's one of our already shop favorites. This is a Porsche 356 Roadster convertible. Uh, such a cool car. Cool color. Look at that thing. Beautiful. Anyway, this is going to be what? What's the... This will be a Hyper 9 um, with five Tesla modules. But this thing will be... It's already a lot of fun to drive around. We took it for a little test drive just to see with it before. It was already fun. I was just thinking, but the engine pops, sputters. It has some, you know, some trouble. I just uh, I cannot wait to drive this when it's just smooth. All right. You guys are going to love this one, this thing. So the last thing in our shop, which is actually a Volkswagen thing, is this project. We haven't had one of these before. It's a Volkswagen thing. It's based, you know, it's a Volkswagen, obviously. So what's the story on it? What are we going to do here? Well, it'll be a Hyper 9. I mean, which will be perfect for this thing. Um, Hyper 9, five Tesla battery modules, the 6.4s. Should have some pretty good range with it. Um, Anything special on this car, or is it just a straight conversion? We did uh, we did four wheel disc brakes on it, and we think we're going to be doing some interior work. We're working on maybe doing a. They have a particular theme, like a, what is that? That bamboo type of you know beach theme. The yeah. beach theme. It's gonna. I mean, it, it'll be pretty cool. You've heard the idiom, variety is the spice of life, which means life is more interesting and enjoyable when it includes many different things. In flash drive's case, it does just that, including a Volkswagen thing. Until next time, thanks for watching.